Hey, welcome to my show. And what we have here is one of my least favorite low water cutoffs, uh, something I've uh, hated on before, the McDonnell Meller number 67. Um, my least favorite, of course, is the 47.2. Uh, this is a switched control here. There's a, a number 11 switch. Uh, the top two are for the uh, shutoff and the bottom two are for the automatic feed. Um, this is the uh, blowdown. We've discussed uh, about this. Usually, uh, if this starts leaking, you want to replace this with a dirt pocket. Um, this got blocked off. It was never, this was, um, originally installed on the boiler and then someone came along later and put a electronic low water cutoff on there. But uh, you want to remove these uh, bolts and um, put on a dirt pocket. Um, this is attached to the lower uh, T or the side glass fitting. You can see that the dirt collects in there uh, pretty readily. Let's see if I can see that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, this fitting here is for the uh, packing um, hold back to keep the float that's in here. And I've, you've probably seen other videos where I've cut this open. Um, and then the, usually this, the, this, the plug is removed um, and the uh, packing is, uh, the, the packing um, float holder is removed and then this plug is put back in. And this plug allows you to access this area sometimes um, because that will get that will get clogged and not allow water to uh, flow back into the, the unit properly. And this is the compression fitting, which is a half inch uh, outside diameter um, tube. Um, and then this goes into an OEM tube, which is notorious for leaking uh, an OEM T here, which I don't have. And There's the uh, top of the float there, and this usually has a plug, or sometimes people put um, the uh, pigtail on here for the pressure troll. And what you can do sometimes is to uh, take that out, and uh, in order to get this the, uh, free up the float, you can push down in there. But before I do that, I wanted to show you what's inside um, a fairly freshly removed unit. So there's what the float looks like from the bottom. Uh, usually you don't get this view. As you can see, this thing's got rusticles almost as much as the Titanic. And what they tend to do is grip that float and hold it in place. So that float is bound in, in place. You can see how the rusticles come out um, horizontally from the this body. That's pretty bad, isn't it? So let's see if we can Alright. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see if there we go. Now I'm going to reach in here and push in and see if we can free up the float. Nope, that float is well and truly stuck, so I'm going to... push down here like that. Oh, crusty. Now that took some some force. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, there it is. It's now free, and you can see it kind of wiggling. Let's see if we can. There are the rusticles. There. There's the float. Thank you for uh, putting up with the herky jerky of this. And now you can hear the the switch clicking. Um, that's what you're going to mostly see because this will have wires and stuff on there. And you want to listen for like two separate clicks and you want to uh, blow that down. 
If this is here, it's a little harder to uh, get that squared away. Um, you can take out the like two dozen screws um, and pull the float out. I uh, make you got to clean the gasket off. You can see there's the gasket where my fingernail is right there. So you want to make sure you have a gasket and probably an extra float if you want to try to rebuild these. But I wouldn't try to rebuild these. I would replace these or uh, substitute an electronic control and uh, get rid of this float if you possibly can. I uh, hope this helped. Um, and uh, I'll see you on the next